Hi, today we're going to spend a couple minutes and set up Olama on an AWS instance with NVIDIA GPU support. All right, let's dive into it. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new instance. And I'll call this Olama test. I'm going to use Amazon Linux. And I'm going to use a deep learning AMI with TensorFlow and GPU support. The instance type I'm looking for is going to be a G. So I'm going to look for a G4DN. That's going to be a extra large. And it's going to be a four virtual CPU, 16 gigabyte. And this has a GPU built into it. The price is 52 cents per hour. So I'm going to select that. I'm then going to select my key pair. So I can log into it. And I'm going to select my security group. I already have one created. And I'm using Launch Wizard 2, which I have set up for port 22 for SSH, as well as port 11434 that I can use for Olama external connection. I'm going to set this up with 60 gig of disk. And let's go ahead and create this instance. Okay, the instance is now created. I should be able to connect up to this. So I will open up a terminal and then I can SSH into it. Let's get the public IP. We're going to log in as the EC2 user. And let's see if we can SSH into that IP. Okay. We'll accept the fingerprint. Now we're logged into the server. So now that we're logged into the server, we can do a couple things here real quick. The first thing I want to do is verify that it actually has a GPU. So I'm going to run LSPCI. And I can see here that I have an NVIDIA TU10 in it. And I'm also going to verify that I have the CUDA drivers. And I'm going to run NVIDIA dash SMI space dash Q and pipe it through head. And I can see that we have the CUDA drivers installed and their version 12.1. So that's all part of the image. So we don't have to install any software. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is actually install the Olama software. And to do this, I'm going to create a work directory. I'm going to call it Olama work. I'll go into that directory and I will do a sudo bash because I'm going to install the software and I'm going to be root when I do that. So I'm going to execute the curl command and this is found on the Olama installation page. And we'll download the software. It's now done. And I can actually start the service. And that actually downloads, builds everything I need, and starts up this, installs the software. So let me start the service. There we go. Not a whole lot there. And let's see what kind of models we have. I can do an Olama list to see what's installed. Okay, right now there's nothing installed. So I'm going to install Olama 2. And I can do that with a pull command. So this goes through and installs the Llama 2 model. And in just a minute, we'll have the Llama 2 model installed. Now, if we execute Olama list again, we should see this model in there. Now we can see that the model is available. So the first thing we're going to do here is actually run a curl command and try to use it to verify this working. And we're going to ask it, why is the sky blue? 
Anna should come back and respond in a moment. There we go. So in addition to using curl to call it, I can also run olama run dash dash verbose olama2 and I can ask the same prompt why is the sky blue and notice before with a curl command I had the stream false and if I go to the application here it will stream it rather than having the long long wait so the total duration was eight seconds which uh, isn't too terribly bad and the number of tokens and the size and all that stuff so we can just do a slash by or a control d whichever we want and we can kind of poke around and take a look at a few other things but what i want to do right now is let's look at the logs of the olama and we can do that using the journal control command and we can see that olama is up and running we can see that it's using the nvidia gpu okay so currently it's listening to the local host and if we do a netstat dash a and grep for the 114 34 port, we can see it's listening to localhost. That means we can't connect to this from an external machine, but I want to. So to allow me to connect from an external machine, I can simply go through and I can modify the Olama configuration. And I can do that with a system control edit of the Olama.service. And in there, I'm going to add a couple parameters and this will override the default values so it's going to be service then i'm going to set environment equals open quotes olama underscore host equals 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 close quotes for the ip and this is going to listen to all adapters so now if we save this with a right control o and then control X, then we can restart the service. First thing we need to do is reload the demons. And then let's reload Olama. And now let's run our netstat command again. And we can let's see that it's listening to all the active ports. Okay, so what does this mean? I can go to my local Mac now and open up a terminal. And in that terminal, I can connect up to this IP address. So let's try doing that using this curl command. And this time we'll say curl to the port of the server, colon 11434. And the ser server should now respond. There we go we got everything up and running in just a matter of a few minutes. We could take the next step and I'll probably add another video to do some RAG integration. I'll use Langchain and ChromaDB and we'll set that up. But right now we have that up and running and I'm going to take a next step here and I will stop this instance. This is going to cost me about $14 a day or about $500 a month. So since I don't need that all the time, I will actually stop this instance. All right, there you go. Now you have an idea of set up Olama and you can set up the various models. Olama has several models, Gemma, Olama 2, etc. And most of these models have the base models and then you have models like Olama 2 uncensored and there's a handful of models here you can play around with i think you'll enjoy what it has if you're doing a rag application where you need to query a pdf or a website or even your own database having the local models 
are very efficient. They allow you to essentially ask questions about your own data without having to have your data assimilated into ChatGPT or other environments. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.